Namaste yogis. This is a Hatha Kriya Yoga session for Agni Power. It's your furnace. It's what we call the Pitta. It's what governs all of your metabolism, of your impressions from the outside world, but also what you eat. Your food is your energy. So we're going to twist things out, detoxify, strengthen, and have a good, good session. Please be mindful of your back and please take the modifications. We'll start in a seated position in Vajrasana, sitting on your heels. Take a moment here, bring your hands to the middle of your heart, settle in. Make sure the heels are nice and wide to make room for your buttocks. And you can slowly release the hands onto your thighs and watch the breath. Eyes are closed, lips are sealed, jaws relaxed. And then slowly inhale, raise the arms up to the sky. Draw the hands together and exhale, bring it all down the middle of your navel. Inhale, open up the arms again, rise up to the sky. And exhale, draw all that energy down into your navel. Progressively keep going. Inhale, stretch up, arch the back if that feels good to you. Exhale, draw the belly button in, round the spine a little bit more. Inhale, open up progressively even bigger, bringing in all of that divine cosmic energy inside of you. And as you exhale, draw it all into your navel center, that Agni furnace. Inhale, up. And exhale, draw in. Every time you go up and stretch in your arms up, try to add more movement. And this time here, when we exhale, we'll draw the hands down, tuck in the chin, really round the spine, tuck in the belly button, and see if you can hold the breath. Just a millisecond more before inhaling again. And we'll do that again. Inhale up. And exhale, draw it in. Preparing for Udhyana Bandha. And here, if you can hold the breath in, go for it. And then slowly release the chin, stretch out the spine, and then inhale. And we'll try that again. Exhale, round the spine a lot, draw the belly button in, pull it up, tuck in the chin, and then inhale, releasing all of the locks, the throat and the belly. So this is for Udhyana Bandha, but it's also part of Maha Bandha where you'd have Mula Bandha, Udhyana, and Jalhandra, your per perineum, your belly button, and your chin. Try to hold for as long as you can. It's not a competition. And then release. Go before your limits, always. Next inhale, we'll raise your arms up to the sky, and we'll come halfway down, halfway into a child's pose. So you're still having your back at 45 degree angle. Stretch the arms, wake up the spine, push the hips back. Breathe here, relax the jaw, and then exhale, child's pose. Ground your fingers into the floor, gently pressing all the fingertips in. Taking a minute here, connecting to your breath, connecting to that furnace. Your belly button is the center stage this morning. And then inhale into a tabletop position. Check that your knees and hands are aligned and your feet are curled. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale, tuck in the chin and raise the spine to the sky. Cat cow here, inhale. And exhale. Remember to press the hands into the floor to give some more space and lift. And as you inhale, stretch the throat. When you exhale, really draw the belly button in, pelvis forward. And pressing those hands. And we'll stay here and try to lift off the knees off the ground. Take a minute here. Shifting backwards and forwards, waking up a little bit the wrists and the shoulders and the toes. You're still breathing, but you're still learning to draw the belly in while breathing. It's trickier than it seems. Give it time, and then we'll exhale back into child's pose. Make sure that the face is relaxed. Lift off the wrists and your forearms, and connect your hands. Next inhalation, we'll come back up to tabletop position, and we'll raise our right arm up to the sky and twist. Look up to your right hand. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, left hand comes up to the sky. Twist. And exhale, lower down. We'll keep doing that a few rounds. Waking up the spinal column. Twisting actions already started here. Massaging the organs. Inhale, lift. Exhale, and lower. Inhale, right. Press into the left hand as you raise up. Exhale, lower. Lift up, left, and press into the right. See how far you can go. Exhale, lower down. 
we're back in tabletop position here. Walk the hands up further out in front of you, cross your ankles, and we'll try to lower down, bend the elbows, squeeze them next to your ribs, and see if you can't go all the way down or halfway down. Inhale, come back, and release into child's pose. Take a breath. This is preparation for Ashtanga Namaskasana, the eight-pointed salute. Exhale, lower down, bend the elbows, inhale up. The key is to try and get the face down before the hips or even a flat back and working up those shoulders. Keep going, inhale. Try to lower the chest down to the floor. Feet can come up. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, lean forward and lower down. And see if you can't even go slower into it. Really squeezing those elbows and maybe come all the way down this time and come into Ashtanga Maskasana. So your hands, your chest, your knees, and your toes touch the floor. Next inhalation, come into your first cobra. It can be a big cobra, which means your hands can go past the yoga mat. The butt's relaxed and the hips are down on the floor and you're pressing the toes into the floor. And here we'll exhale, release cobra, but come into sphinx. So lower your all forearms, make sure they're parallel. Find a nice length in your spine, tuck in the chin and give some space in the back of your neck. And then as you inhale, open up into your sphinx and exhale, lift off everything, tuck in the chin and look at your toes. Inhale, sphinx, exhale, press into the forearms, look at your toes, it's like a forearm plank. Inhale, sphinx, exhale. So it's harder with the tops of your feet touching the floor like you would in Cobra. It's a little easier if you curl the toes. Keep going, inhale, sphinx, exhale, look at your toes, lift up the hips, press into the shoulders. Inhale, sphinx, exhale, forearm plank. And we'll stay here in our forearm plank. We can curl the toes again. You can interlock your fingers, really pressing down into the ground and through the crown and through your feet. And then we'll inhale back up to a little plank and then exhale into downward facing dog. Ooh, pedal out your feet here. Relax the jaw, shake the head. Do all the adjustments you need this morning. And here's a little tip for you. If you inhale into your plank from here and notice you have to adjust your feet, that's fine. And then move back into down dog without moving the feet anymore. That's the perfect setting for your feet and hands. So you can try that again. You go into plank. Notice if you had to adjust the feet. And then try to go back into a downward facing dog without moving your feet. You can pedal out. And feel free to bend those knees and lift those heels super high, no problem. It's more important to have a flat back than to have straight legs. You're pressing actively into your 10 fingers. It's like trying to open up two really tight jam jars in your hands. Take a few breaths here. Push the hips up to the sky. Relax the jaw. And we'll take a twist here. So your left hand's going to come and hold on to your right hip. You're going to try and look at the ceiling through that right armpit. Some of us may stay there and others may slide that left hand down to their ankle. It's a balancing pose as well. And then come back into downward facing dog. And we'll try that on the other side. So right hand comes onto your left hip. And you can use that exhale to slide it down. See how far I'll go. If it's behind the thigh, that's fine. If it's behind the calf, okay. And if it's the ankle, awesome. But really the important thing is to be able to see past your left armpit when you're looking up. We'll come back into downward facing dog here. Inhale, ripple forward into a plank pose and exhale back into down dog. Inhale, ripple and exhale down. So now you see why that little tip earlier helps. So you're shifting forward and exhaling back, waking up the spine. Use your toes and we'll meet in a plank position. Hips the same alignment as the shoulders, looking past the yoga mat. Exhale, knees down here and come into Ashtanga Maskasana, the eight pointed salute chest, chin, knees down. Inhale into your cobra. Waggle out the hips a little bit, that's fine. Make sure you're not locking the jaw, the shoulders or the elbows. Stretching the throat. And then exhale, come down. And we'll meet back into downward facing dog. Any way you like, if you're gonna go via plank, go for it. If it's too soon, that's fine. But we'll let things cook a little bit. And we'll all meet in down dog at some point. You can still pedal the feet, getting your bearings. It's still the beginning of class. Check that your shoulders are nice and open. 
space in your armpit. And the next inhalation, right knee into your chest and give a kiss to your right knee. See if you can't waggle it from left to right elbows. And then drop that right foot between your hands and come into a low lunge. Lift up the head, the hands can stay by your right foot. And then you're gonna exhale, shift back into a downward facing dog. Inhale, left knee now, right elbow to left elbow to right elbow to left elbow, and then drop the foot <laughs> between your hands and drop that right knee. Open up to the sky, relax the shoulders, relax the jaw. Make sure as well that heel is down on the floor and your back toes are curled. And as you exhale, we'll step forward this time into a forward bend. Your first bend here, you may look like a gorilla, you may have bent knees. Then we'll inhale to halfway lift, hands on the thighs or on the tibias. And try to look past the yoga mat, flat back, exhale. You can come back into your forward bend. If you feel like you can go further into your folds, go for it. But the weight is in the toes. And here we'll inhale, step the feet forward past your toes. You can use a block here. Arms are straight or slightly bent. Knees are definitely bent. And the hips are up to the sky. And we'll twist again here. So right hand up to the sky. And press into the left hand. And you can try and straighten out that right leg. Exhale, forward fold, nice and bent. Inhale, left arm to the sky. Stretch out that left leg. And press into your right hand. And exhale, come back down. We'll do that again. Inhale, right arm up, straighten the right leg as you exhale and release everything. Inhale, left arm, straighten out the left leg on an exhale and bring it all back down into a forward bend. Relax the head, weight in the toes. Remove the block and we'll inhale here into a standing position. <laughs> you can keep the knees bent. Maybe you open up the chest a little bit more and we'll draw the hands in the middle of our heart, standing in the front of our mat. Inhale, arms come back up. Exhale, draw everything down, forward fold. Bend the knees if you need to, relax the head. Back is flat. Inhale, out of the Uttanasana, halfway fold. And as you exhale, that right leg will go back and the left leg will meet in down dog. You can jump back if you're up for it already. If not, go easy. Inhale, plank. And exhale, lower down into Chaturanga Dandasana or like previously. So either an up dog or a cobra, your call. And we'll come back into plank and then come back into downward facing dog. We'll do a few of these, don't worry. Take a three breaths here. And when you're ready, jump forward to the front of the mat. Inhale into halfway fold, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stretch up, arms up over your head, arch the back slightly, and exhale straight back down, forward fold. And here we go. Inhale, halfway lift. Jump back or step back into your down dog or add a chaturanga and an upward dog and push back and we'll all meet in down dog either way. Inhale, flow into your plank. Exhale, chaturanga ashtanga maskasana. Inhale to cobra or up dog. And then try to come back either into plank or to chaturanga and then exhale into down dog. Ooh, yes, power it up. Connect to your belly button center, breathe, relax the jaw. And then when you're ready, we'll either jump or step forward, halfway fold, and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stretch the arms up. Exhale, hands and milk your chest. And then here we go again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, this time, chair pose. Relax the jaw, happy chair, lift the toes, stretch the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and jump back or step back, and come into Chaturanga, and then up dog. If you're stepping back, just wait for us in down dog. Up dog or cobra for others, plank or Chaturanga, and then we meet all in down dog. <clears throat> Breathing here, relaxing the jaw. Inhale, right leg up into the sky. As you exhale, bend that right knee, and try to cross to the left elbow. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, come into plank, left, right elbow, Left elbow to right knee. Inhale, right leg up. Left elbow. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, touch knee to left elbow. Go slower rather than faster. It's quality over quantity. And this last one here will shift and bring it all the way into a lunge. Crescent lunge here. Your left knee is lifted. Open up the chest. Expanding as much as you can. Try to imagine you're ripping the mat apart with your feet. 
And as you exhale, drop the hands down on the floor and stretch back that right leg into a pyramid pose. The left heel can stay lifted. We'll come back into down dog on exhale. Inhale, plank. Your vinyasa of your choice. Up dog or cobra. And exhale, back into down dog. Inhale, left leg up. And same thing on the other side. Bend that left knee and crisscross. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, right elbow. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, right elbow. Inhale, left leg up, slowly but surely. Exhale, right elbow. And then switch the left elbow. Hold it and then drop that left foot. Crescent lunge. Inhale, stretch up. Your left knee is bent. Your right leg is straight. You're balancing the ball of your back foot. Breathing here expansively. And as you exhale, drop the hands down next to your left foot and shift the hips back. Pyramid pose with the right heel lifted. Exhale, down dog. Breathing here. Then slightly the elbows to the outside. Engage the ten fingers. Empty the lungs and then jump forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Here we'll inhale into Utkatasana. Chair pose. Lift the toes. Drop the tailbone. Look far ahead of you. Draw the belly button in. Stretch with the fingers. Inhale, straight up. Arch the back if that feels good for you. If not, just come to standing. Exhale here. Forward fold. Go straight into it for some of us. Inhale. Utkatasana again. With a smile. We love it. It's lower ab work. The tailbone is dropped. We're not pushing the buttocks out. And as you exhale, forward fold. And then we'll jump back or step back into your vinyasa. If you're going into vinyasa, after your up dog, come back to chaturanga. Woo! Exhale, downward facing dog. Feel that. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, bring it between your hands, come into warrior one. Hips are squared, arms are above the ears. Exhale, downward facing dog. Maybe with that right leg lifted, maybe we take it with us in our vinyasa. Opening up the chest, going back maybe into a chaturanga. And then we'll straight up go through with the right, left leg up into the sky. Warrior one. And then exhale, back into down dog. Take that left leg with you if you want to into your vinyasa. You don't have to. If you feel wiped out, you can just wait for us. And we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Breathe. Settle in. Calm the nervous system. Bend the elbow slightly. Empty the lungs. Jump forward. And this time we'll come seated onto our buttocks. Straight into Nokasana boat pose. So here in your boat pose, settle in. Taking deep breaths, lengthening through the crown. You have the option of holding your legs or freeing the legs. Keep the knees bent if you want to begin with, no problem. The most important is your spine, your breathing. Then we're going to lower down halfway. Half boat pose, no kasana, and inhale, come back up. So you're exhaling, going down, and inhaling, coming up. Leading with the heart, not with the head and the arms. If this is too much on your lower back, you can drop the heels onto the floor and do the whole thing with your heels down. Keep going, repeating, pushing through the feet as you go down. Coming up, holding here, relax the jaw. Maybe we stretch the legs now for some of us and no kasana, looking up to the sky. And then we'll hold in our knees. Ooh, exhale, lower down onto the floor. Take a minute here. Interlock the fingers now. Point the finger, the index fingers towards your toes. Kali Mudra. There's two options to do this uh, Kriya version of no kasana. First option is you got your knees bent, your heels are flexed, and you rise up, try to touch your toes as you exhale. Inhale, lower back down. Exhale, touch your toes. Inhale, lower back down. This is excellent for your adrenal glands. It's detoxifying. If you want a little bit of an added challenge, you do this with legs straight. Aha. Uh -huh. So leaning back. Exhaling, touching your toes. Inhale, leaning back. And you're hovering off the ground. The shoulder blades don't touch, but you go as far as you can. Exhale, touch the toes. Inhale, back. You can do this, yogis. You got this. Exhale, touch. Inhale, back. We find ourselves now in a static half boat pose. You can always bend the knees again. Keep the heels down. Or you're setting in with the legs straight, but close the eyes, let things simmer, breathe it in. Find comfort in the discomfort. Unless you have absolute, really strong pains in your lower back, maintain. We'll tuck in the knees now, exhale. Bring them into your chest and then separate the knees. Come into butterfly pose. In your butterfly pose, flap your wings, so move your knees up and down. You have the one option is your forearms are bent, elbows outside of your shins, or you can stretch the arms forward, depends on your back, but just keep flapping those wings a few more times, and then we'll inhale, come back up, straight back, bring the knees together, and we'll come down onto our backs with our knees tucked into our chest. 
So we'll raise the right leg up to the sky and draw up the left foot on the floor. So your left knee is bent, your whole body is nicely aligned, and chin is tucked in, arms alongside the body. And as you exhale, lift up the head and the shoulders, stretch the arms. If your neck hurts, you can also support your head with your hands behind your head. Those are the two options. Another option to spice things up is you straighten out that left leg. So that's really your call. You can always keep it bent, especially, especially if you've got problems in the spine. So do what feels right. Both toe mounds are active and we'll switch it up here. So inhale, bring that left leg up, drop the right foot, same modifications on the other side. So if you had the knee bent, keep it bent. If you had it straight, you had it straight. If you're hovering, hover. Same thing with your hands, but you're pushing through your toe mounds, holding it statically. Head is still lifted. Shoulders to breathe, relax the jaw. Connect to your core, connect to your furnace. And we'll inhale, lift up that right leg as well. Both legs are lifting, we'll switch it out, scissoring here. So drop left, then drop right. So inhale, lower, exhale, switch. Inhale, lower, exhale, switch. If you want to add more spice, try to lift up the head and shoulders even more. And switch, lower, and switch, lower, and switch, lower, and switch. If this is too much for your lower back, you can take a break and join us later. One more time on the right side. One more time on the left. And come back up. Both legs are straight. Head is still lifted. Shoulders too. And then exhale. Bend the knees. Oh. Open up the knees. Bring the feet towards your face. Or towards your pelvis. Release the lower back. Big, 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 big breaths. Relax the jaw and the face. You got this. Bring the knees in together, straighten out the legs, lift up the head and the shoulders, and here we go, second series here of scissoring. But we'll start on the left side, so left leg straight. If you feel like now with the heat you can straighten out the right, go for it, and if not, keep it bent. And here we go again. Switch legs, switch legs, switch legs. Breathing, exhale, inhale up, exhale down. Head is lifted, shoulders are lifted. Feel the inspiration in your belly. Keeping the toe mounds alive and active, straight out those legs, lower and switch, lower and switch, breathe, exhale, inhale, exhale, you got the smile if it gets difficult, lower, and we'll stay here on the right side, right leg up, left leg straight, lift up the shoulders a little bit more, toe mounds still again are active and alive. And we'll lift up that left leg up to the sky, bend the knees, and again, separate the knees, grab the feet towards your pelvis. Ooh. So you're pulling on your feet as your hands are pulling towards you, the feet are creating a resistance, so it's releasing also around the shoulder and neck area as much as the lower back. Inhale, legs back up. Lift up the head and shoulders, find your length, and here we go again. This time we'll be twisting, so raise that right leg, left leg down, Twisting, use your modifications if you need to bend that opposite leg. And here we go. Switch over to the left side. Or right leg may be straight or bent. And switch to the right side. Left leg may be bent or straight. And keep going. Inhale, switch. Exhale, lower leg down. Inhale, switch. Exhale, lower leg down. Inhale, switch. Exhale, lower leg down. Inhale. Exhale. Keep going, yogis. And lower. And switch. And lower. And switch. Try to lift up the torso even more. Keep going. We're almost there. Switch. And hold now on the left side. You can bend that right knee again if you need to. You can straighten it out. Relax the jaw. Breathe even deeper now. Inhale. Raise that right leg up. Both legs are lifted. Shoulders as well. Open up the knees. Feet together. Ooh, and you can come into dead bug pose or happy baby if you like to if that feels good. Do whatever actually feels really good for your lower back and your whole body. We'll meet again with legs straight into the sky when you're ready. And this time we'll start on the left side. Lower down that left leg. You're still twisting and lift up just the left leg. So the right leg is lowered. We're twisting to the left. Left leg goes down. Same left leg goes up. And bring it back down again methodically and thoroughly. It's quality, not quantity. Keep going. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, bring it back up. Woohoo! And lift up both legs, switch the other side. So on the right side, left leg goes down. Right leg is lifted. And now lower right leg to meet the left. Inhale, bring it back up. And exhale, lower it back down. Keep both shoulder blades lifted. And keep also shoulders away from the ears if you can. We're all guilty of it, myself included. <laughs> but lift up that right leg. 
Exhale, lower it down. You got this. Lift up that right leg. Exhale, lower down. Toes and fingers are alive. Inhale. Both legs up. Ah, and cross the ankles. And try to kiss your knees. That's your exhalation. When you inhale, you're going to tap the toes to the floor and open up to the sky, lowering the head. So exhale, kiss your knees. Bend the knees. Inhale, tap down. Look at the ceiling or the sky. Exhale, kiss your knees. Inhale, tap down. You can switch the ankles. Exhale, kiss the knees. Inhale, tap down. Exhale, kiss the knees. Inhale, tap down. Exhale, kiss your knees. Head is still lifted. Tap down. Exhale. Inhale. Legs straight up. Come back to boat pose. Uncross your legs. Set yourself up. Take the modifications you need. Maybe explore going further, like stretching out those legs. Maybe not. Your call. Toes are alive. Heart is lifted. No kasana. Maybe you're in your full expression. Maybe not. That's okay, yogis. Cross the legs. Jump back. Plank pose. And lower down completely to the floor. Oh, bada, bada, bada. Take a deep full inhalation and come into cobra or sphinx. Your call. But inhale. Fully push the belly. Separate the legs. Press the toes. Shoulders down. Engage into the index and thumb. Stretch out all of that strengthening says we just did before and turn maybe the head to the left and to the right and feel how when you even turn your head you can connect to your core if you want to take it deeper go for it if you're happy there stay if you feel like a child's poor go for it i like to go even deeper maybe bring the head back without whiplashing myself and again turning my head left and right really open up the chest one more breath here and as we exhale we'll lower down back on the floor inhale plank and we'll meet in downward facing dog Mm, notice the fruits of your efforts here. Feel how much more solid and secure you are in your downward dog. Empty the lungs, jump forward. Inhale to halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale, bring your hands into your heart. Exhale, fully release the hands. Make sure you're at the top of your mat again. Feet are engaged. Inhale, lift up the arms over your head. Stretch out Kali Mudra here, index pointing to the sky, fingers in a lockdown. You'll separate your feet about hip width distance apart, maybe as wide as the mat. Stretch out through your hands and let the arms come behind your ears. Push the pelvis forward and we'll stretch to the left. Inhale up and exhale, stretch to the right. Make sure you're not popping out your butt, but you're really pushing the pelvis forward. The weight is in the toes and we'll keep going. Stretch to one side and exhale to the other. Stretch out those obliques. So you're lifting up through your hands as you inhale. And exhale, going opposite sides. And this time we'll come now flat back, straight forward, down. You can bend the knees here, no problem. But try and keep a nice flat back. The weight now is redistributed on the four corners of your feet. If it's too intense with the arms straight over your head, you can also open them up as wings. Next exhalation here, we'll lower down into a forward bend. Relax the head and notice the fruits of your efforts. You can grab a block here too, this can help. If you're someone who can touch the floor easily, then no problem. But a block can always help. One is more than enough. And you'll tuck in the chin. Bend the knees. Inhale. Right arm up to the sky. And stretch now as you exhale. That right leg back. That right knee goes straight. Lower down. Tuck in the chin. Inhale. Left arm up. And exhale. Straighten out that left leg. So the right knee is still bent. Press deeply into the block. We'll do that again on the same thing on the other side again. Right hand lifts up. Right knee stretches. Exhale down, left hand goes up, left knee stretches, press into the right hand. Exhale, lower down, relax the head. And very slowly inhale, come into your chair pose again, happy chair. Bring the hands in the middle of your chest and we'll twist here. Left elbow over right knee. Check your knees are in line, you're not conking them together. The left knee is not surpassing the right. The toes are lifted. You're finding that leverage in that left elbow and that right thigh. Bring the hands down towards your hips, pressing them deeply. Inhale back into chair. If you need a break, take a break. If not, stay with it and exhale. We'll go to the other side. So it'll be right elbow on left knee. Press into the hands. Open up the chest. Make sure that your knees aren't conked and that they're not falling out of alignment. Your hands are going down towards your hips. There's still pressure in the palms of your hand, but your face is relaxed and soft and breathing. You got this. And inhale, back into chair. Yay. And exhale, forward fold. Yes, Uttanasana, relax the head. Jump back, Chaturanga, or meet in down dog. Inhale, up dog for those who've gone in their vinyasa. And come back into downward dog. You can take an extra Chaturanga if you like. 
Inhale, right leg up. Exhale to left elbow. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, knee to left elbow. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, knee to left elbow. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale to left elbow. If you need to do this with your left knee down, you can. Keep going. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Touch. Hold. And maybe we lift that left arm up. Maybe we straighten up that right leg and we're in a fallen star pose. Maybe the foot is on the floor. Maybe we lift it up. Woo! Your call. Enjoy it. Explore. Exhale. Bring that right foot between your hands and we'll inhale into a crescent lunge. Don't worry, we'll do it on the other side as well. Inhale, straighten out here. Bending that right knee. And as you exhale, we'll twist again. So it's left elbow on the right thigh. Press the hands. Can't really see here, but I'm opening up my torso and I'm energetically pushing my hands down to the hips. Engage as much as I can into that right foot, finding leverage. So I'm not collapsing into my right thigh. Breathe, find length through the crown of the head to the back of the left heel. And as you inhale, back into crescent lunge. Stretch up here, take another breath. And then as you exhale, lower down, straightening that front leg. Barasvatanasana, bring the block with you to the inside of that right leg. You might need it for later. And we'll walk to the long edge of our mat and we'll come into Prasarita. So your straddle pose here. <clears throat> Use the block just in case the floor seems super far away for you. Make sure the toes are pointed in, the heels are pointed out, and the back is flat. No need to be in a hurry just yet to go all the way down to the floor. We're going to twist out now our straddle pose. So your left hand is on the block and your right hand's on your lower back. And you're going to twist the front edge of your mat, leading with the heart, opening up the chest. And the weight is equally distributing your feet. I like to lift up my toes so I don't lock my knees. And that lower right hand on your back is there to help remind you that the back doesn't follow the twist. It stays where it is. And then when you notice you can stabilize it, you can connect with it, then you can lift up that top arm up to the sky, grabbing air molecules. Make sure you're stacking deeply into the block. And as you exhale, we'll lower down and we'll do the same thing on the side. So this time, right hand is on the block, stacking wrist, elbow and shoulder. Left hand's on your lower back. The weight is equally distributing your feet. And when you feel that the hips are nice and steady as best they can, it's a little trickier than you might think. And it's hard to really self-diagnose. But when you're ready, bring up that left hand up to the sky and grab air molecules. So you're feeling this stretch. You're pressing into the ground with your right hand and you're stretching out through the left. And as you exhale, lower down both hands. And now we'll see, can we go down? So settle in, use that block to rest your hands or your elbows or your forearms. See if you can't widen the legs a little bit, or maybe bend the knees a little bit, especially if you're feeling a tension there. Keep the toes alive, that will help. And then with every breath, keep going down deeper and deeper, and I'm showing you options. And maybe you're somebody who's on their forearms on the floor, that's great, and you can have fun here by lifting up the heels for the day that you decide to do a headstand from straddle or a forearm balance. We'll come into Skandasana, so scoot that block underneath your right buttocks so that you can bend that knee and come seated down. You extend the left leg and bring your hands into prayer. And we'll try that on the other side. So scooch the block now to the left leg and sit down. And that block is there really to help you have a little seat and keep the toes alive. Keep gazing at the ceiling, hands in the middle of your heart, near your sternum. You're actively pressing elbow against knee. And we'll do that again. So you take the block with you. And if you want to give it a try without the block, because you don't feel like you need it, then go for it and give it a try. But if not, take the block with you and we'll go on to the left side. Think about that toes of that extended leg and we'll keep going. If you want extra, even more spice, you can do the whole transition without touching the floor. So hands stay in Angelina Mudra and you let yourself go from side to side. It's pretty intense stuff. So you choose your options here. We'll keep going here. We're on the left side one last time. And then we'll here, we'll come back into the middle, drop the hands, flatten the back, inhale, lengthen through the crown, move the block to the top of your mat. And we'll pivot back into our pyramid pose, Parasvottanasana. So revisiting this pose here, that back left heel doesn't have to be lifted necessarily if you don't want it to be. You can try to lower it down, but keep those hips squared. And that block is there to help you. So it's on the inside of your right leg and your right left hand is on it. And you're going to take it up with you as a flat back. And your right hand is in the crease of your hips to teach your right hip to scooch back and the left hip to scooch forward. And the reason why is because we're going to get ready here for Chapasana. 
And so in your Chapasana, you're going to walk that block a little bit further forward and try to lift up that left leg and stretch up that right hand. So you're adding all the ingredients from that previous pose we did before in Prasarita. When you exhale, land into your crescent lunge. Take a breath in your crescent lunge, gaze up at the ceiling, try to perfect it, deepen it in. And then as you exhale, warrior two. So your left foot is perpendicular to your right. And you'll bring the block back inside the inside of your right knee. It may be that you are somebody, we're going to go down here into humble warrior. So it may be that you're somebody who has that right elbow on the thigh. Or you're in between stages and that's where the block can help you. You're not quite there to get onto the floor yet because your butt's sticking out too much maybe. So use it as an intermediary and take a few breaths to get to where you want to go. If you feel like it, that left arm comes straight up over your head and let it be pried out to the floor. So you exhale, we'll lower down that left hand, move the block out of your way, and we'll pivot right over into Vashistasana on the left side. Your half, sorry, your side plank can be half plank if you want to bring that right knee in the middle of your mat as a kickstand. If you want to go full on throttle, your right arm next to your ear and your palm is facing down on the floor, stretching over. We'll come into plank, vinyasa in your own rhythm. Take your time. And we'll meet in down dog. If you need a child's pose, go for it. No problem. Settle in, relish even more now the fruits of your efforts. Smile, because you only had the other side to go now. Yay! Left leg lifts up, inhale, and as you exhale, knee to right elbow. Yoo-hoo. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Inhale, exhale, left knee, right elbow. Look past your yoga mat as you inhale, look at your toes. Exhale, look past your yoga mat. Yoga mat. <laughs> inhale, left leg, right knee. Right elbow, ooh la la. And we'll shift over into our side plank like we did earlier. So take those options. You can drop that foot straight. You can maybe lift it up in that fallen triangle. Take your pick. We will all meet with our left foot between our hands and we'll come into crescent lunge. Take a deep inhale here. Lengthen, push through the back of the ball of your foot as well as the front one. You're ripping the mat apart, finding an opening in your heart to the cosmos. And as you exhale, we'll twist here. So this time, right elbow, left knee and press the hands into your chest. Try to gaze the back of the mat or maybe to the sky. Depends on your neck, depends on your cervicals. But there's an active pressure, it's the elbow that's giving elevation to the torso. You're not collapsing into that left thigh. You're using the pressure in your hands and in your arms to find that opening. Keep that back leg straight. Next inhalation will come back up to crescent lunge. And have a breath here. And then we'll straighten out that front leg, come into our first try here of our pyramid pose, Bhaspatanasana. Block is on the inside of your left leg. Your right hand can be also on that block if you want, flattening the back, just getting a feel for things here. And we'll just actually just pivot over into our Prasarita pose and revisit this later. So walk your hands down the long edge of your mat, down on the left side, right side. And we're ready for our straddle pose. Point the toes in, heels out. And again, use your options here, block or no block. And we'll see if we can't lower down a little bit more now that things have warmed up. So if you're somebody on your forearms, you may want to try pincha with straddle legs, the prasarita legs, or you may want to do tripod headstand or headstand. It's tricky, but it's not impossible. Maybe you're halfway up because there's a shift in your pelvis and it may throw you off balance. Remember, your pelvis and your he head weigh the same amount, so they can throw you off balance. But if you can, go for it. Stretch up those legs up to the sky. Squeeze the heels, gaze. Keep the toes alive. We'll exhale. We'll come halfway down. And see, can we go back up and down, pump those legs just a wee bit and try to figure out how those obliques actually work in your glutes as well? If that's too much, that's okay. We'll meet you all with our feet on the ground in a minute. So we're back in Parasvottanasana. Take a breath here. If you need child's pose as well or a frog pose, you can. You can flex out the knees, stretch things out, lengthen the spine. And we'll do a second try here of Sirshasana with, sorry, Pratarita legs, straddle legs. So I do it in headstand. You can do it in tripod headstand, but try to lift up again. Give it a second try. Push through those feet, activate the toes. Inhale, take your time, and maybe you bend your left leg, maybe you bend the right leg, and you try to tap your heel to your butt, and stretching out on either side. Have fun with that. Explore. The more you shift your center of gravity, the more you'll tone itty bitty muscles in your core. Maybe you bring your legs together again and just keep it simple, that's totally fine too. Make sure there's no obstacles in around you. Hopefully, yogis, that's most important. 
and squeeze in the legs and try to hold the pose a little bit longer here if you can lengthening out through the spine if you're somebody who's not going inverted don't worry prasavita has lots of benefits too and we're going to meet you there now and then we'll slowly walk back to the front edge of our mat we'll bring our block with us and we'll place the block on the inside of our left leg our left hand is on our left crease of our hip and our right arm is going straight forward flattening the back make sure that you are pushing back that left hip, the right hip wants to follow the hand, and we'll get ready for twisted chapasana. So place that block further up ahead on your mat. Take lift off in the right arm, and take lift off in the left arm. Woo. Trust the block, really press into it. If you don't have one, you're on the floor, really trust it. You can bend your knee if that's the case, if you don't have blocks. But really pivot so that you can open up the heart. And as you exhale, lower down as gracefully as you can, and then you come into your crescent lunge. Inhale here, and as you exhale, warrior two. Ah, maybe not, <laughs> but we'll curl up the toes. We know we're almost at the end. We'll bring our block back again on the inside of our left leg. Same thing here, humble warrior. Maybe your elbow is on the thigh. Maybe use the block. Maybe the block is supporting your hand. Maybe it's supporting your elbow. You've got lots of choices. You can also change the setting of your block until you feel completely comfortable on the floor. Some of us also might want the block on the outside of the left leg. Let's just stretch that right arm over your ear. Next exhalation, we'll come back into Vashistasana, whoopa, and flip that all over. Maybe you've got a kickstand where you've got that top left leg to help you. That's no problem as well. Or maybe you're in the full expression of Vashistasana. We'll come back into Vinyasa or Child's Pose. Either way. We will all eventually find our way into a child's pose. Up to you. Some of us like to stretch it out first and down dog. That's your call. If not, you probably already have your knees down, your forehead on the floor, connecting with Mother Earth through your third eye chakra. Relaxing the jaw. Now that we're nice and warmed up, super toasty, we can go even deeper. Yes, we can go deeper into our hips. Deeper into our hips and deeper as well into our core, really working our obliques. So next inhalation, lift up that right foot, bring it on the outside of both of your hands and we'll lift up that right hand up to the sky. Your left knee is down. You have the choice to stay there or bring that right arm behind you and gaze at it. If this is still too challenging, you can bring that block underneath your left hand and support yourself. And for those super fancy spaghetti people, you will have your forearm on the floor. And maybe you do something fancy by bending that left knee and grabbing hold of your foot. These are options. If none of those suit you, come back to the initial pose where you just simply have the right hand up to the sky. Either way, we'll exhale, lower everything down, we'll come back into our lizard. We're going to break down that idea of that coming in from lizard into our side plank. So let's give it a go. Pivot your left heel to the left and bring that right foot stacked on top of the left and come back into lizard. Woohoo! And we'll try that again. <laughs> so here try without the hand lift up the right hand and bring back that right foot to stack onto your left heel one more time pivot back and find your side planks not easy huh and maybe you're a little bit tired so you can always use your top right foot as a kickstand and if you're feeling extra special today you can also do a tree pose with your leg Take a breath here and we'll all come meet into a plank pose. Vinyasa of your choice or go back in the child's pose. Either way, we will all find our way eventually to child's pose. Use your child pose wisely. Deep breaths. Calm the nervous system. Go back to a parasympathetic nervous system by exhaling deeper. Relaxing the face. Relaxing your jaw. And then we'll inhale, and this time left foot on the outside of both your hands, left arm up to the sky, right knee is down. Same thing on this side here. Have a figure out where you want to go. You can bring that arm behind you. You can do that fancy stuff with your foot. You can grab the block. You can go down your forearms. Or you can just stay with both hands on the inside of that left foot and just let things simmer. You go as far as your breath wants you to go, not as far as your ambitions want to go. The ambition should be in the fluidity of your breathing. We'll then come back, both hands on the inside of that left foot if you're not already there. Back is flat. And again, here we go. Shift the weight into your hands. Pivot that right heel to the right. And bring that left foot stacked on top of the other. Vashistasana. Watch the head. I'm guilty of it too. And we'll exhale. Come back into that lizard pose. Do that again. Inhale. Lift up the arm. And try to bring that, swing that left leg stacked on top of the right. Maybe do something fancy. Bend the knee. Tree pose. Find extension here. Play with it as many times as you like. 
and slowly we'll all find our way into a plank pose, vinyasa of your choice, or you can again rest in child's pose. There's nothing wrong with resting, guys. Just like naps are cool. So we won't love you more if you're doing more vinyasas. And besides, you're alone at home, so do what feels right. Our next pose is a dolphin pose, which is a down dog on our forearms. You can do this from child's pose. If you're still in down dog, you can just lower down and give that a try. So settle in into your dolphin and maybe you have bent knees. Press deeply into your interlock fingers and we'll inhale, raise one leg up to the sky. Try to kiss your fingers. Woo. Inhale, the opposite leg goes up. This is preparation for Pincha Mayurasana, our forearm balance. Inhale, up and exhale down. Inhale, up. And exhale down. So every time you lift up the leg, you're giving a kiss to your hands. Have a couple more tries if you feel like it or stay static either way. If you want to go all the way up to Pincha, up you go. This is the time to do so. This is an Agni core sequence for inversions. I'll give you another video for that. And then we'll eventually all lower down into our child's pose. We'll interlock our fingers behind our back and see if we can't lift them up overhead past the zenith for some of us maybe. But make sure that your whole palm of your hand is touching each other not just the fingers take a breath here and then we'll inhale come back up cross the legs from our tabletop position and we'll come onto our butts so any way you like to come onto your butt just go for it and we will come into the boat pose no kasana hey we were here already right yep and it feels so much better so feel the engagement see how brave and courageous you can go notice the evolution maybe you're straightening out your legs now maybe you're not that's totally fine too and we'll lower down to a half bow pose ardha no kasana it's also called navasana in ashtanga and we're exhaling and bringing that belly button to our spine one last breath and we'll lower down to the floor stretch your arms up over your head too Take a minute here. Notice how your spine behaves on the floor. Next inhalation, point the toes, bring the hands on your thighs and exhale, lift up all the way up, cross your legs and we'll do Ardha Mayurasana, which is a seated twisted fold. You can do this with your left leg bent underneath your buttocks, but make sure you've got space for your buttocks or your heels out of the way. If that's too intense, you can always straighten out that left leg, no problem. Interlock the fingers on top of your knee. And you can either stay there, or you go a little bit further, so you lift up onto that left arm up to the sky, right arm up to the sky, and you pivot all the way to the back. And then we'll gaze back at our toes and see, can we reach for our toes? That's another option too. Maybe that's just too much for today, that's totally fine as well. No problem. You can always bring your hand back on your hip. Maybe you want to spaghettify more, maybe you pass that front arm between your thigh and your calf so it should be your left arm and your right arm is going behind you if you're started with the right leg that is bent on top it gets quite confusing here i will admit and take a few breaths here and just grow tall through the crown of the head close the eyes and we'll gently unwind when you're ready taking a few breaths and scooch now that right foot closer to your left hip and see if we can't go into hero's pose. It may be that you cannot get the two knees aligned stacking one on top of each other. That's fine. Maybe you've got one knee lifted. It may be you're not feeling anything and you're really weird. And no, I'm just kidding. But you might want to put your heels further away from your hips. And then we'll inhale, lift up the arms up to the sky. And some of us may bend forward. If this is just too much, come back to that first option where you're just sitting. The knees aren't aligned, but you're trying your best to get that right heel closest to your left hip. That's totally fine too. And the butt's on the floor. For the other yogis who are folding forward, their fingers are active and they're stretching. They'll use the next inhale to lift up their arms up to the sky. And next, I'll release the hands behind your back. And we will uncross our legs. Ooh, take a minute, relish, feel what is going on. This is actually a pose. Just having your chest lifted and you're not parking into your shoulders and your legs are straight. Do the same thing on the left side. So left foot crosses on top of the right. The right can be straight or it can be bent. Again, no one will love you more if you're going into more intense versions. So if you want to keep that right leg straight, go for it. And if not, take that left leg, left arm up to the sky and pivot and we'll find our way into our twist here. Maybe you grab your toes, maybe you don't. Maybe that's just too much. Ardha Mayurasana. And see where can you go from here maybe you bind maybe you don't it has to be pleasant it has to be relaxed asana sukham stiram 
you're going through the crown of your head, you're massaging your organs, you're really connecting to your Agni fire. The more compression, then the more release. Just like a sponge. If you want to clean out a sponge, you squeeze it many, many times. And it's the same thing here, same mechanism. We'll slowly unwind here and we'll see if we can't scooch that left foot next to our right hip. Maybe it stays still vertical. Maybe you can stack your knees. Make sure your butt is on the floor. You can also use a block underneath your buttocks. There's no problem with that too. But that sometimes is what we need, that missing millimeter. And then if you did so on the first side, do it again here. Move your heels away from your butt. And we'll inhale maybe for some of us and raise our arms up overhead. And maybe we'll fold forward. Try to hook your chin over your knees. Us ladies, we sometimes we have a disadvantage of um, being a little bit top heavy and our cleavage is getting in our way. So adjust, feel free. It's important. The fingers are active. If you're not folding forward, it's totally fine. You're still breathing, relaxing the jaw, and trying to understand why is it difficult? Where is it difficult? Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, release the hands. Uncross the legs. And we'll stretch out the legs with a, ideally a flat spine. You can stay static here and just connect with everything that has been going on. Or you can tap the legs, massage the legs. But keep the toes alive and connect to your breath as much as you can. And the reason being is because the next pose is Vajrasana. We're going to come back exactly to where we began, which was sitting on our heels. So we can close the cycle of the space-time that we've created for ourselves and see the evolution of what we've done. Settle into Vajrasana, be as comfortable as possible. So if you need a blanket, take a blanket. And close the eyes and draw your hands together, the base of your belly, and stretch up through the axis of your body. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, lower down the arms. So we go in the opposite direction of where we did in the beginning of class. Keep going here, inhaling. Matching your movement with your breath, eyes closed, and feeling the connection, feeling the evolution. If you are somebody who does Kapalbati, please go ahead and do three rounds of 60 breaths. I'm very concerned about teaching these intense pranayams online because it requires quite a lot of guidance. Lots of things come up. You're affecting your pranayama kosha, which is a very subtle body that has a huge influence on your emotions and your nervous system. The next time you exhale, though, we'll all meet with our hands on our knees when you're ready. You can pause the video. And we'll arch the spine like you did in the beginning of class. And exhale, tuck in the chin. So you're inhaling, arching the spine. And exhaling. Just see how things have changed. Deep inhalation up. Take a full breath here. Because now we're going to try again those bandhas. So inhale deeply. And as you exhale, tuck in the chin, round the spine, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Expulse all the air out of your lungs, press deeply into your thighs and suck in the belly button underneath the ribs. Hold here. Relax shoulders, close eyes. Stay as long as it feels comfortable. Please do not go to the limit. Always go before. Release the locks, release the posture before you inhale for safe exit. And then don't move at all. And just turn your palms facing up and connect and feel. That space right above the skin, that ephemeral space, your pranayama kosha, the subtle body, where you start to realize that where one cell ends, the other one already has begun, that there is no limits, that within an atom there is also an indefinable amount of space, infinitely small, just like the cosmos is infinitely vast. Remember to relax the jaw and feel, just stay connected to the surface of your skin, maybe the tip of your nose, maybe it's your navel center, but feel that furnace within you. And relish this moment, how easy and intuitive it is to meditate. And if it's not, that's okay. You can go ahead into Shavasana. And if you can stay here and relish that moment, stay with it. You've done all this work to get there. In the meantime, though, I bid you a lovely day or a lovely evening. And I leave you here. Please stay as long as you need to. And then as soon as you feel that you can no longer concentrate, please go into Shavasana before starting your day. Be kind to yourself. Satnam Namaste. And I'll see you soon for more videos.